I expect there's a few of you who wish I would say it was, but I just can't do that. I'm sorry, and I don't want to insult. My greatest desire is to help you draw near to the giver of gifts. The only star of the Christmas season is still Jesus. And Christmas should mean more than deflated budgets, inflated waistlines, and exploding credit card statements. Serious question. Is Christmas for Christians, Jews, or pagans? You might be surprised. And yes, that's the title of this program. Let me begin with a group of short, buckle-up holiday questions. I'll fire them off quickly because some people won't want to dwell on these awkward matters. Number one, was Jesus born on December 25th? Number two, did Joseph and Mary Christ have a son named Jesus Christ? Number three, why do millions love the baby Jesus yet ignore a crucified Savior? Number four, did Mary, a young Jewish virgin, morph into the Queen of Heaven and co-mediatrix with Jesus? Number five, if it's Jesus' birthday, why do we get all the presents? Number six, has Santa replaced Jesus and a noble Christian named Nicholas? And number seven, is Hanukkah a Jewish Christmas? And finally, number eight, is Christmas a pagan holiday? Now, these are all awkward questions that deserve answers, but I want to start by answering the last one first. Is Christmas a pagan holiday? Now, this may shock some of you, but I don't think I would say it is. I expect there's a few of you who wish I would say it was, but I just can't do that. I'm sorry, and I don't want to insult any of the pagans in my audience. I, I do want to be clear, I am neither anti-Christmas nor opposed to gift-giving. I just want to take this holiday moment to affirm the humble birth of God's greatest gift. There was no room at the inn. He was born into a working stable with dung-crusted straw, a humble beginning for a royal birth. Is there room at the inn of your heart? I hope so, because as we take a hard look at Christmas and evaluate the facts, my greatest desire is to help you draw near to the giver of gifts and make sure we all recognize that the only star of the Christmas season is still Jesus. I guess I should introduce myself and thank you for joining this Crosstalk Christmas Conversation. My name is Randy Weiss. I'm a Jewish believer in a Jewish Messiah. But I must confess that for me, this Christmas stuff can be very confusing. I wasn't raised in a family that celebrated Christmas, and I realize that for most folks it's a time of great joy, but not everyone is full of Yuletide cheer. And we should also remember that for many people, Christmas is a time of sadness, and it brings conflicted emotions of loss or perhaps an empty feeling that not everyone can understand. Everything is red and green in the stores, but I think it is wise to add some black and white to the color scheme. I'll just say it. Christmas shouldn't be run by Madison Avenue. Christianity is not a religion of consumerism. And Christmas should mean more than deflated budgets, inflated waistlines, and exploding credit card statements. Gift giving is wonderful, but must we be led down the same path this year? Let me ask you a hard question. Were you really satisfied last year? Seriously, were you and your family members truly satiated after the Christmas buying binge? Be honest, most everyone wanted a little more, a few more surprises, a bigger adrenaline rush of colored paper and pretty bows before the bills came home to roost. Sure, I hope we all enjoyed what we did receive, but we've been trained to believe that more is better. In this regard, we're all a bunch of addicts. In our own ways, we're commercialized consumer junkies who are never fully satisfied. It's as though we've been wired to want more. The problem is that most of us are not getting what we really need. It is for this reason that advertisers live. They try to convince us that if we purchase their product, we'll finally be satisfied. The problem is that it doesn't end at Christmas. It never ends. The ads declare that the correct fragrance will attract the desired suitor, 
The proper outfit will make you look like the skinny model on TV. A sexy car attracts sexy passengers. The perfect toy will transform fussy, spoiled brats into contented little angels. But it's a big deception. Now, now look, I'm not the Grinch. You can buy every right outfit and still not look like the anorexic model if you eat too much and refuse to exercise. And who says skinny is better anyhow? Yes, I mean, giving and receiving gifts, it's nice. But I gotta ask again, does it truly satisfy? At best, it only pacifies, but pacifiers are for infants. It is the celebration of Jesus' birthday. God gave us his best present, and maybe we should live with less wrapped presents and learn to enwrap ourselves in the gift of God's Spirit and his holy presence. Now, I will quickly answer the Queen of Heaven as co-mediatrix co with Jesus' question by saying no. I mean, Mary should be honored, and she was given a place of tremendous stature in the gospel. But Jesus needs no special assistance from his mommy to be our mediator. And now we must quickly move away from the flare of Christmas and dig into the substance. Are you interested in the facts about this celebration? They're even better than the myth. Christmas is truly a fascinating story. There is some basis to believe, wait for it, in Santa. I am happy to report that Santa Claus is truly the shortened Dutch name of a great man known as the real Saint Nicholas. He lived in Turkey about 200 years after Jesus. As best I can tell, he was one of the good guys. Nicholas was a well-to-do early bishop in the church, but he was so generous that he gave his wealth away. His kindness spared many young girls from lives of slavery and prostitution. Okay, so what am I saying? Saint Nicholas really lived, and Moses really saw a burning bush on a mountain, but Moe's mountain was as close to Walmart as Nick's home was to the North Pole. Hanukkah is not a Jewish Christmas, and Santa Claus has been dragged way out of context. Both perennially appear in December, but in all likelihood, only Hanukkah belongs there. Wait, what did he just say? Was Jesus born on December 25th? Probably not. I mean, think about it. What self-respecting shepherd would have been freezing his tuchus off out in the field with his shivering flock in the middle of winter? That's one good reason many folks doubt that Jesus was really born on December 25th. Besides, that date has never been agreed on among the oldest leading church movements. Actually, Christmas was one of the last holidays to be celebrated as a regular part of the Christian calendar. Now, for the record, it was not until the fourth century that the church decided to commemorate the birth of Jesus with a Christmas festival. And even after that, it was not universally recognized at a consistent time. The Eastern churches chose January the 6th. The Western churches, at the suggestion of John Chrysostom, settled on December 25th. Later, in the 5th century, both sides negotiated a settlement and fixed Christmas on December 25th, and they chose January 6th to be the anniversary of the visit of the wise men. So contrary to popular legends, nobody knows why those dates were selected. And what's up with these Christmas trees? The disciples never saw one in Israel. But does a Christmas tree make you a pagan? Well, you might be a pagan. But if so, there are other behavioral issues that you might wish to resolve first before you seek deliverance from Christmas-itis. Now, how many of you are tired of hearing that Christmas is a pagan festival? Should faithful believers even celebrate Christmas? I guess it depends on who you ask. What can be ascertained with reasonable assurance is the fact that the pagan holiday normally focused upon by the detractors of Christmas is Saturnalia. That was the Roman winter festival, and that was a pagan celebration of the sun. But unfortunately for the Scrooge mongers, Saturnalia 
probably ran from December the 17th to December the 21st. It didn't even encompass December 25th. So that argument against Christmas is not terribly convincing. Now, if you really want to wreck everybody's fun, find another myth to build upon before you tear down the ones we have diligently constructed for ourselves. Some legalistic Christians and a few cults insist upon linking every Christian holiday to some pagan traditions. Well, I mean, I might be wrong, but I think some folks just enjoy controversy. In my humble opinion, there are better issues to stand on and more relevant things to stand against. Anyone familiar with the early church realizes that our practices are far from orthodox in many aspects. Yet since the world has accepted this season as a time to recognize the birth of Jesus, why fight it? You'll never win the world by condemning it. And at least people are finally thinking about God. That, that's a good thing, you know, it's a good thing. Listen, I sleep with a grandma every night, so I don't care for the idea of grandma being run over by a reindeer. But in spite of all the Christmas foolishness, we also hear a steady stream of wonderful Christmas carols proclaiming the lordship of our king. Jesus was born of a virgin in a lowly stable. The king of the Jews had very humble origins. It's clearly a story worth commemorating in song. And if we joyously sing about God's glorious plan on that silent night, some may consider the rest of the story if we share the gospel and if we learn to live that gospel. Christmas presents a wonderful opportunity to evangelize. Now, sure, some people are consumed with selfish pursuits during December, but so what? Is the world less selfish during the other 11 months? I don't think so. Maybe we just need to find more creative ways to advance Christ's kingdom during the Christmas season. And maybe some creative Christians will find new ways to engage in fruitful evangelism beyond the children's Christmas pageant. Now, once again, let me clarify. I'm not knocking school. Christmas plays with the adorable costumes that lure many unbelieving relatives with video cameras into our churches for photo ops with their cute little sheep and adorable wise men huddled around curious manger scenes. But perhaps it's time to find something to add to the mix. Some churches have taken it to the streets, literally, using, utilizing living manger scenes on busy corners. Fantastic. But let's not stop there. Christmas is a great time to proclaim Jesus. But it is also a time to be sensitive. Holidays intensify joy, but as many of you must realize, holidays also intensify loneliness and disappointment. Single-parent homes often feel extra stress during the season when people might reflect on broken relationships, broken promises, and broken dreams. Many families have been tormented by a serious illness or a recent death, and holidays can amplify feelings of emptiness and depression. Perhaps you or a family has suffered painful financial struggles. Gift-giving can have tortuous effects on the unemployed or underemployed who may be unable to reciprocate. Parents who are financially strapped have great difficulty explaining their lack to little children who have a greater expectations than their family can afford. I'm certain that for some, Christmas can be hard to celebrate. Will you allow me to share an old Christmas music video that may express the feelings that I'm trying to communicate. I want to describe these to you. Please enjoy this, I'm going to call it timeless, <laughs> Christmas contrast.
Mama told her little Bill that Santa Claus had nothing to give. Daddy couldn't talk about it. Daddy couldn't cry. Daddy couldn't face his child. Daddy couldn't tell him why. Daddy used to work the factory four until midnight. Every year at Christmas time, Daddy let Bill light the Christmas light. Mama told her little Bill it wasn't cause he'd been bad. Daddy he stopped her with a tear. Billy, you've been a fine lad. Santa Claus isn't coming to town. At the house where little Bill lives, he lost his way. They took away. Tears fill the house where little Bill lives. So much mommy and daddy see to give little Billy a Christmas tree. The money's gone and the bills ain't paid. Finance man sent Santa away. that laid off with the unemployment blues. Daddy piles the pavements in worn out shoes. Waiting for the call back in unemployment lines. Benefits ran out on the floor. It's very easy to get wrapped up in the presents, cards, parties, and holiday festivities. Maybe we should look at some of the cold, hard facts about Christmas. Hey, what's wrong with this picture? Why are the wise men with the baby Jesus at the manger scene? According to Matthew's account, the Magi didn't meet Jesus until later when Joseph and Mary had already returned to their home just prior to their escape to Egypt. More troublesome is the fact that some people decorate their houses to the max and give every possible attention to the details of their major scene, and still they don't know Jesus. I mean, what a tragedy. Am I talking to you or someone you know? Let me ask you something. Why is it so easy to give attention to the babe in a manger? 
while we ignore the Savior on the cross. I guess everybody loves the infant Jesus. He doesn't make as many demands as the living Lord who calls us to die to ourselves as we carry our cross and live for Him. So think about it. If your view of Christ is limited to that of an infant in a manger, you just don't really know Jesus as the Savior. Never forget that Jesus was a middle-aged Jewish man who was brutally beaten before he was executed to pay for crimes committed by me and you. He carried the penalty for our sins to the cross. Then on Easter Sunday, he rose from the grave, and he's coming back as king of kings, not a babe in a manger. The infant Jesus is a very cute marketing concept, but he is best remembered as a grown man who gave himself as a ransom for our sins. Now, I love Jesus, and I hope you can forgive me. But personally, I don't get quite so wrapped up in Christmas as most of my non-Jewish friends. I didn't grow up with a Christmas tree. We didn't even have a Hanukkah bush. However, so as not to feel left out, I decided to share a few little-known facts about the Christ family. You remember them. Joseph and Mary Christ, the parents of Jesus Christ, and his fun-loving yet troublesome brother, James Christ. Okay, I hope it's obvious that I'm pulling your leg. Permit me to set the record straight. Jesus Christ was not the baby boy of Joseph and Mary Christ. The name Jesus is actually a Greek transliteration of the Hebrew name Yeshua. That was a shortened version of the Hebrew name of Joshua, Yehoshua, which means Yahweh is salvation. Yeshua was a common name among Jewish boys. There were 10 men with the name in the Hebrew Bible and three in the New Testament. Christ was a title, not his last name. He was Jesus, the anointed one, or if you prefer, Jesus, the Messiah. You see, Christos is really a Greek translation of the Hebrew title Mashiach. In English, that means Messiah. When was the birth of Jesus? Well, we know that Jesus was not born in the year zero. I mean, the calendar didn't go from 1 BC counting down to zero at the birth of Jesus and then start all over again a year later at 1 AD. By the way, AD does not stand for after death, as in after the death of Christ. It's a Latin term, anno domini, which means in the year of the Lord. Okay. So then when was Jesus born? If you think his birth certificate had his little handprint and footprint next to the date of birth, December 25th, year one, you missed it. You know, the Times Square didn't have a special New Year's Eve celebration when the world went from B.C. to A.D. Of course not. Nobody knew it happened. It's helpful to remember that the dating system that was often used in the Bible well, it was based upon the understanding of time according to the reign of kings. You know, so-and-so was born in such-and-such such a year of the reign of king thus and stuff. As an extreme example, the birth announcements that were sent out never said Seymour Schwartz was born in the year 257 before Christ since nobody knew when the Messiah was going to be born. And the Jewish people had several messiahs before Christ, false messiahs, and they had more messiahs, false messiahs, after Christ. So I guess you can see that the whole historical context of these issues is therefore really quite relevant. Now, I cannot tell you who invented the Christmas tree, but I do know that God made pine trees and Madison Avenue makes sure we're flocked. Allow me to set the record straight about when Jesus was really born. I've tried to give you enough information to protect yourself against Bible thumpers who want to steal your Christmas fun because they think it's a pagan festival, and now I'm going to help you understand when was Jesus really born. Now, does it matter? I think it does. You see, if we neglect the matter, we join in transmitting more foolishness about the issue to future generations, and worse, if we reduce the truth of the gospel to fairy tale status, 
it turns Christ into something preposterous. The birth of Jesus is more than a children's story. It is historical reality. Jesus was born near the end of the reign of King Herod the Great. Herod the Great died in 4 BCE, before the Common Era. Since Herod the Great was an active participant in the Christmas account, and since he was dead by 4 BCE, Jesus was certainly not born after that date. This information does not change our understanding of the Gospel account. It merely brings that fact into a correct historical perspective, and it also shows one obvious defect in our calendar. Even the B.C. A.D. calendar, this confusion, it has known errors. Understanding them can help us avoid misinformation. And I think it's also time to explain the whole Joseph and Mary story, and I will do that. The birth account of Jesus is important, but I'm out of time. So I guess it's going to wait for another time. I genuinely hope that you've enjoyed this Christmas program. I can't fix anyone's bah humbug blues, but I do want you to know that there is great joy in the blessed hope of Christmas. Jesus is Lord, and he was such a nice Jewish boy. We all pray God's richest blessings on your holiday season. Blessed was his birth, blessed by his death blessed in his resurrection, and blessed be his return as our soon-coming Messiah. Blessed is he who comes in the name of Jesus, Yeshua HaMashiach, Baruch Abba HaShem HaMashiach. And, oh yeah, I keep forgetting. Merry Christmas. <laughs>